Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. So for today's video, we're doing a makeup tutorial on this look right here. So it's the super dramatic, super smoky, teal green cut crease. Let's go with that. I think it looks super pretty and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. So if you guys wanna see how I got this look, then just keep watching. Hello, you guys. I have never been so inspired in my entire life. I feel like I've just kind of been in a creative rut. So today we took it there. So, okay, let's just go ahead and start this. So I'm using my Jaclyn Hill palette and can you believe that I did not use one transition shade that was a brown? Yes, I know. So that's really what I'm trying to do. Like I just kind of made it a personal goal to myself that I really wanna do more dramatic looks, I wanna do more color, I wanna do things more creative. Like, how many neutral smoky eyes can you do? You know what I mean? I mean, I love them, don't get me wrong, but I just wanna start doing like more dramatic looks like this, something a little more unexpected. Okay, so I love greens, I've mentioned that before, and I was like, let's do it. Let's go with the green. So I didn't use any browns for the transition, and the first shade I'm gonna go in with is this one right here. Also, by the way, I have on my Soft Ochre Paint Pot, that's the only eyeshadow primer that I use, but instead of setting my whole eye like I usually do because I went in and cut the crease, I only set like from here, I uh, actually set it with this right here. It's a Wet n Wild single. I think it's called Creme Brulee, but I'm not 100% because the uh, thing came off, but any bone color shade that I usually use, the one in my Kat Von D palette is actually out. It's just like the corners left, so I found this, I forgot I had it. I just feel like you get better pigmentation when your base is sticky, so I didn't set my lid at all, I just set the crease. So I'm taking my Sigma E40 brush, and this is gonna be my transition. I'm just going to treat this like it's any brown transition shade. We're gonna go in and blend this into the crease. It's gonna look really messy in the beginning, but I promise it's all gonna come together. Because I was kinda second guessing myself, I was like, what the hell am I doing? What is this? But in the end, it all came together. You just wanna make sure that you're blending. If I'm in a rush, like I will definitely compromise my blending. Like I'm the first person to admit that. I just, like if I have like a messy blend, or I'm rushing and I'm like, I just don't have time to like sit here and blend my eyeshadow for 30 minutes because that is the key to having like a really seamless look, especially if you're going for something really dramatic or any type of like eyeshadow look, a really seamless blend is like the key to that. It really truly is. Sometimes if I'm in a rush or like I'm running late, I've got to get out the door, but I still need like my makeup to look good. I will definitely skimp on the blending, 100%. I'm the first one to admit that. Usually when you're doing like just browns and neutrals and just like a like an all over like everyday look, it's really not a big deal. I wouldn't say that when I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh my God, I look awful. My eyeshadow looks so unblended. Um, but for a look like this where you're using like bright, bold colors, I think you definitely wanna take your time blending 100%, make sure it's blended. Even when I was done like with my lashes and everything, I still went back in and you know, if things looked a little harsh, I just kept blending and blending and blending and that's definitely the key to get this look. I'm gonna take my Sigma E25 brush. This is my smaller, it's just a little bit more dense of a blending brush and I'm gonna take this shade right here. This is from NYX and this is in the shade Electroshock. It's this really pretty cobalt blue. And at first I was thinking the teal and the blue, like I don't think they're gonna go together but I just did it and I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it and it ended up being exactly what I needed for this look. Like the blue I feel like just brought everything together. So we're going in with a couple of different color schemes but you'll see it all comes together in the end. I'm gonna do the same thing I always do, look straight into my mirror and go right in the fold of the eye. Now this color, you have to build it up. It's not like super pigmented in the beginning. You really wanna work this color in. You wanna make sure that you build it up and just go in little by little and section by section. Also, I found because I didn't set the bottom half of my lid that it didn't blend into the crease like as seamlessly as I wanted because the base kind of grabs the shadow. So what I do in a situation like this is I'll take a little bit of the shadow 
on the brush and I'll just kind of like pack it into place. You could do this especially if you have a problem with skipping because I have finer lines all up in my lid, unfortunately. Um, I do have those fine lines so sometimes I find that shadow skips, especially if you have problem with skipping in this inner corner. That's something that I've found that I've really noticed as I get older. So what I do to hide that problem is I'll take my shadow on the brush just a little bit, of course flick off the excess, I always do that, and I'll just kind of like pat it into place just to kind of get in that fold of the eye and then I go in and blend and that always works for me oh shit I forgot I was winging out my outer V okay I totally forgot I was doing this because I typically don't do this so on this side you can see I have a wing so I can't believe I forgot to do this that's okay we're gonna do it now see people make mistakes it's okay you guys even makeup people like me make mistakes so okay so what I was doing with every transition shade that I went in with I am bringing it out this way because I'm gonna go in with a wipe and like sharpen that edge so it's more of a winged outlook so I'm gonna take the first teal shade that I did I should have done this in the beginning totally forgot I was doing this because I'm a dumbass so we're gonna just bring this out onto the corner right here it's gonna be messy as fuck okay it's gonna be fine we're gonna clean it up and it's gonna look beautiful when we're done I'm kind of using like the tail of my brow as a guide so you see my brow ends right there I'm gonna bring it out just a little bit past my brow just kind of wing it out we're gonna go back in with that NYX shade just do the same thing naturally your eye pulls down right so we're gonna go down and just follow the same shape as the fold of the eye, but we're gonna wing it out. It's literally just like we're doing a wing with gel liner, but we're just gonna pull it out and up. We're gonna go in and define the crease even further. And for this, I'm gonna take this shade right here. It looks kind of black on camera, but this is actually just a really um, dark forest matte green. Taking that shade with this little BH Cosmetics brush, you can see how small it is. It's really gonna get up in that crease to define it. And this is the Studio Pro number 17 brush from BH Cosmetics. It comes in a set of three brushes. I think you can get it for like under 10 bucks. When my eyes open, you see where my eye folds. That's where I'm taking this color. I'm gonna leave my eye open and kind of let it guide me so I know where to lay the color down. Build that bitch right up. Excuse me, I'm filming. I'm also gonna do the same thing with this and wing it out right along with the rest of the shadows. Okay, now this is the part where I kind of look at my eye and I'm comparing the two and I'm like, what do I need to do? I kind of feel like I need a little more of the blue on this eye so I'm just gonna go back in as you go in and add colors and blend them and intensify them you're gonna lose a little bit of pigmentation that's totally cool you can always go back in and reinforce that color and I find that I do that a lot especially with these blown out smoky eyes sometimes I just want a little bit more of one of the colors that I use to stand out and I just go back in and re-intensify whatever needs to be re-intensified. I feel like I said re-intensified 15 million times. I'm gonna go in and clean up my brow. I typically actually never carve out my brows ever. Like, I just don't have time for it and I don't wanna deal with it. But I feel like I went a little too high with the teal. It just got a little out of hand. So like for me, it's a little too up in this area for my liking. I'm gonna go in and just clean it up. I'm taking a little bit of MAC Pro Longwear and this brush is a Morphe M421. I really like this brush because it's so like tiny and precise. We're just gonna clean up some of this teal. I'm just gonna take my pinky about the concealer and then next what we're gonna do is go in and carve out the lid I'm gonna go ahead and take that same brush I'm gonna take some of my Mac Pro Longwear. I'm in the shade NC20 if you guys are interested. The trick with a cut crease is you go in little by little. You don't wanna go in too heavy handed with the concealer. When you do that, it just gets gloppy and messy so fast. So you're gonna go in little by little. Just remember you can always add product, but it is very hard to take away product. My eye folds right here. 
I'm gonna start there, but go just a little bit higher than that because my eyes are hooded. I kind of like to do the shape first, like the outline and the crease. And then I like to go in and carve out the rest of the lid. I take my pinky and just kind of tap out the product. And then what I'm gonna do is take this beautiful shade right here. This is a really pretty like forest green shimmer shade. I'm gonna go in with another Morphe brush. I know I'm using so many Morphe brushes, which I've said so many times, like I have a love-hate relationship with Morphe eyeshadow brushes. I love their face brushes, but their eye brushes have like played me so much in the past. But I'm trying them again. And from what I've been using, I've been really liking. So I took that green shade with the M167. I just wet it with my Milani Make It Dewy setting spray. And this is just gonna intensify that shadow. We're just going right over the concealer. When I get to the middle, I'm just gonna kind of fade it out. I'm going to take a, another Morphe brush. I can't believe I use so many Morphe brushes. I kind of feel bad because I kind of talk a little bit of mess about Morphe brushes, but I don't know. I've been liking them lately. I, I find myself reaching for them a lot. So I'm gonna take this Morphe M514 brush. So I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. I just want a little bit of darkness on the outer view, but I don't want to go in with black. Like I feel like black is just a little too harsh because this look is so dramatic. I am not really a fan of black eyeshadow. I prefer to go in with darker browns or like grays or dark purples. I feel like for me it's just a little harsh and it kind of takes away from the look. So I like to go in with shades like this and I'm just gonna kind of tap this on the outer V. I know I've said before when I go in with the outer V, I like to go in with more of like a packing brush and I don't have one in front of me, but um, just something a little more stiff where it's really gonna pack on the color. For this look, I'm not going for anything harsh. I'm just going for something a little more soft, just a little more like diffuse. So that's why I'm going in with this more of a fluffy brush. I'm taking some Benefit Roller Lash. You guys just go ahead and use whatever mascara you have. I'm gonna take my Coco Lashes. These are in the style Girl About Town. They're not super dramatic. Like, I don't want really dramatic lashes because I want to be able to see all this hard freaking work I just did on my face. So, while I'm waiting for my lashes to dry, I'm just gonna set them right here so the glue can get tacky. I'm gonna take my face wipe and we're gonna clean up this mess on the outer corner. I used to be able to take my nail when I had acrylics and I would just sharpen it, but I can't do that anymore because I took off my acrylics. But I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen this line. Oh, I feel like once you do this, and put on your lashes, everything just comes together. Yes, bitch. I'm gonna go ahead and do my face off camera and then I will come back and we will finish off the eyes and we'll do lips together. So I will be back in just a second. I'm back. I fixed my hair for you guys too. You know, the only thing I like about straight hair is that it takes me six seconds to do. Other than that, I hate straight hair. I feel like my head is just so big because I feel like I have a big forehead. No, I don't feel like I have a big forehead. I do have a big forehead. And I feel like when my hair is straight, like, let me scoot back so you guys can see it. See how like my forehead, ignore this double chin, but see how my forehead just looks so big and my hair is so flat. Oh, why? Let's go ahead and move on to the lower lash line. So what I'm gonna do for this is take that initial transition shade, the teal from the Jaclyn Hill palette, and I'm gonna go in with my BH Cosmetics. This is the number 17 brush from the Studio Pro line. I'm gonna go in with my Morphe, I forgot what this brush is called, I guess I could just look at it. The M432, this is the flat definer brush. I'm gonna take some of that NYX shade, that cobalt blue. We're gonna press this along the lower lash line. Usually when I do this, I like to just like, do a nice little line, like nothing too crazy. But I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker today. We going all in 
honey. I'm going to go back with that same BH Cosmetics brush, take a little bit more of that blue, and blend these two together. I want to see just a little more blue. I feel like I lost some of the teal, so I'm just going to take the teal and then just put it a little more underneath. Like I'm bringing it down a little bit lower underneath the blue. Now I'm gonna go in and line the waterline and this is from Maybelline. Um, it is the Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil. This is in the shade Glossy Emerald. And I already did black on my top waterline, so I'm just gonna take this on the bottom. These eyeliners are really good. If you guys have never tried them before, they're amazing. I'm gonna take this pigment next. This is from Inglot, and this is the Pure Pigment Eyeshadow. This is in the shade, uh, it's just number 122. If you guys have not tried the Inglot pigments, I'm here to tell you right now that you don't know what you're missing. Ooh until you try them. They are incredible, absolutely incredible. I think they're so good. I just, I love them. I love Inglot and I just feel like they're not talked about enough. Like they need more credit because they're really good. And some of their price points are pretty inexpensive. So if you've never tried them out, definitely check them out. They're so good. So I'm gonna take this for my inner corner. This is my Eco Tools, my little tiny smudge brush. I'm just gonna pop this in the inner corner. And I did wet this with my Mario Rose Water Spray. I find these just stick a little bit better and they're more intense when they are wet. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish the lips. Now, I know this is like so cliche because I'm gonna go in with a nude, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, but I don't know, you know, with this eye, you can totally do a bold lip, do whatever you please. I personally just feel like this looks best with a nude. I feel like very dramatic eye makeup should stand out and I don't want to go in with a bold lip and kind of it's just too much for me personally so I'm gonna go in with a nude and I'm gonna take this lip liner this is the NYX matte lip liner in the shade I want to say this is London yeah this is the shade London and I'm just gonna lightly overline my lips you guys know I'm not big on lip liner but I kind of feel like I just want to see that definition today Next, I'm going to go in with this lipstick from Maybelline. This is in the shade Cinnamon. I haven't used this in forever. We're going to bump it up with a gloss because I am a gloss girl. And I'm going to take the Vivid Hot Lacquer from Maybelline. This is in the shade Tease. I'm just going to put it in the center. Kind of tap it out with my finger. That is the completed look. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know what that dramatic hair flip was, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what else you want to see. Let me know if you want to see more makeup tutorials, more dramatic, like colorful looks. I would be happy to do whatever you guys want to see. Like literally just let me know and I will do it. I think that's all I have to say and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.